Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I wanted to quickly try and talk about how I'd made all the connections on the standard electric master clock timekeeping unit. So this frame is connected to positive side of the circuit, or what I'm gonna call ground. And when the second hand contact makes a rotation, that contact you just saw closes and then opens on the top of the minute. And then that feeds ground from this contact, which is connected to that switch you saw. That goes up, out, and then returns onto this contact. This is the main advanced ground. So whenever it gets to the top of the minute, it advances everything one minute forward except for the bell chime unit. That one has a separate contact on this side that closes when the electromagnetic coils are energized to wind this uh, mainframe. And the main advanced ground feeds the bell chime, so it would actually ring the bell zones when it is on the top of the minute and it also advances the slave clocks. The reason why there's separate contacts here though is you don't want reverse polarity going back. So I place diodes going outward to the bell chime and a separate one going to the slave clocks. So then if you activate the buttons on the bottom of the clock to ring the different bell zones, it won't have any reverse polarity going back to advance anything a minute forward. Same thing with the slave clocks. If you activate the slave clock advance key, it will only advance the slave clocks and the slave relay and not advance anything else. Unfortunately, these clocks did not seem to have an advance key for the tape drive mechanism. That one is connected through the wind key so if you had to manually start the clock after a power outage, you could select the wind key and it does the same contact closure as the top, but it disconnects the power to the bell chime advance. So if you do that, it only winds the mainframe. And I think that's pretty much covered everything. Um, everything's just sort of triggered to advance one minute forward when the contact closes. And then it's all just a maze of where power's coming from and where it's going to. And there's a lot of doubles of things. So oftentimes you'll see multiple ground wires going to different spots. And the back of the clock looks like a whole maze in and of itself. Um, if anyone has any questions about how any of this is connected and how to get anything to work, just let me know.